herpes, genital herpes, is a sexually transmitted infection that lots of people are worried about. This video is just going to talk about some points that would help you understand it a bit more. Herpes, which is herpes simplex virus, it's a sexually transmitted infection. You can have type 1 or type 2, which um, tells you what kind of strain of herpes you have. It's super, super common, but unfortunately there's a whole lot of stigma surrounding herpes that would make any you know, patient worry. It's quite important if you feel your symptoms are herpes, you need to come in and get tested so you can be advised adequately and you will be provided with the right treatment, which is in a form of an antiviral medications. And you, you know, we'll just advise you on general ongoing care. Herpes can affect both male and female. Unfortunately, even if you use condoms all your life, it's something that you can still have because it's through skin to skin contact. It's something that unfortunately stays with you forever, but um, you can manage how frequent you have outbreaks through you know, either long-term treatments or it's just all about how you look after your immune system. Condoms are good, but it doesn't cover the whole genital region and that's how it can be transmitted. So if you are presenting with a, um, a, a, a sore or a spot that you think is herpes, it's not necessarily that you acquired it from your current partner. You could have acquired it from years ago, but it's just now perhaps your immune system has been depleted, um, that they just woke up and they appear. Also possible that if your current partner has active lesions, of course, you know, transmission is from that person. It can affect any age. There's a low, whole lot of unnecessary stigma that's associated with herpes. It's just one of the, you know, viruses like chickenpox. Nobody stigmatizes you if you've got chickenpox. It's, you know, it's all in the same sort of category. It's easily um, managed. It's something that stays with you forever. It's not written on your forehead, so um, you should stop just being so self-conscious that, you know, I've got herpes, everybody knows. It definitely shouldn't, you know, take over your life. You can live your life as normal. Just certain measures would need to be taken into effect if you've got an outbreak so you don't, you know, can't, you know unintentionally infect other contacts that you may have. So herpes, if you've got an outbreak, a swab can be taken on the sore that you have, um, which would tell you whether you've got type 1 or type 2. Type 1 is predominantly, you know, an orally, but nowadays because of oral sex happening, a person could be infected with type 1 in the genitals. But doing a swab would def definitely be helpful because it will give you more information which strain of herpes you have. So having type 1 doesn't make you immune to having type 2. Likewise, having type 2 doesn't make you immune to having you know, type 1. So if you've ever seen somebody with a spot or a sore on the lips, that person has herpes. But, you know, a society just consider it as, oh, I've got a cold sore, but that is herpes. It's type 1. So another way you can test for herpes is by doing a blood test. The blood test as well will tell you whether you, you've got type 1 or type 2. Um, sensitivity is more with a swab. The blood test, however, can be quite helpful. Um, when you're attending to have a blood test, it, would have a, it has a look back period of 17 weeks from when you think you've been infected. But if you've got an active sore or a spot or a lesion, then a swab would be more appropriate. But when you come in, we'll decide on which of the two tests is the best one.